at the Stabler Arena at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for the 1981 U.S. Women's Gymnastics Championships. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. Welcome to our program. You know, to say you are a champion in any sport is impressive, but to say you are the national champion in any sport carries an aura and prestige that cannot be denied. And today we will crown the 1981 overall women's gymnastics champion, and we are so pleased to be here in the Lehigh Valley for this very important event. We have a veritable four-ring circus going on because the rotations are always in progress. The girls are always competing in the vault, the bars, the beam, and the floor exercise. And and yesterday they held the compulsories where all the girls had to do really the same exercise, the same routines at all the apparatus, and that counts 50% toward their finals going in to the free exercise which you will see this afternoon. And working with us to describe the Sukaharas and the whys and wherefores is Muriel Grossfeld, our expert, and I guess you could say, Muriel, it's a tale of three girls. Marsha Frederick, very fine gymnast, you know from Connecticut, was in an automobile accident, could not compete. Tracy Talavera has won everything but this event and Julianne McNamara, who is the defending champ. Yes, and I found it very interesting watching the compulsory competition because it was almost a reversal of last year. Julianne is the defending national all-around champion, but everyone expected Tracy to win last year, and Tracy folded under pressure, and Julianne, first time out, just went right ahead. But the pressure, I think, came to Julianne in this competition. She was doing fine last night, really going right along, winning the competition, got to the balance beam and had a real hard time, including a fall and an overtime deduction. So she's got to crawl her way back up. But I think it's not good to overlook a third young lady, Kathy Johnson. And Kathy Johnson was a 1978 national all-around champion. She spent a long time becoming a good gymnast, and it takes a long time to become a good gymnast. So I'd look for Kathy Johnson to be right in the thick of things, and it's going to be a tough battle today. Scores after the compulsories, which count 50% toward the final total. Tracy Talavera in front. Gina Stallone, a local girl, is in second place. Kathy Johnson tied for third with Amy Koopman as we get set now for the first of four rotations. Julianne McNamara is having her troubles, as you can see, and this is the first of two vaults. The higher score will count. She is the defending champion, 15 years old, from Flushing, New York. Julianne's vault is a front somersault with a half twist in the tuck position, a very good selection. And she just hit a very good vault then. It's very, very well done. And a pretty good score of 9-3 for Julianne McNamara. Here's Tracy Talavera, 14 years old, from Walnut Creek, California. And as you saw, the leader after the compulsories. But three months ago, she very nearly didn't compete in this event and perhaps would have been out of gymnastics altogether. The story this year of Tracy took place away from the gym floor, and it's a poignant tale indeed. Tracy has lived away from home since she was 11 years old. Her parents missed her. They worried about her education and future, and they were having trouble meeting her $10,000 annual training and travel expenses. They depleted their savings. They wanted their daughter home, possibly even out of gymnastics altogether. She didn't want to leave. I, we, we captured her. When she came home from a trip, we said, okay, you're here, you're staying now. And she didn't like it at all. Well, we thought it would be good. Uh, her sister is going to be 17. She won't be home. They, both girls won't be home that much together. So we'd like at least them to be together well, for the, the last year, together. two right. years together. And we thought it could work out. She could work at a local gym club, but it, it, she resisted sufficiently and it just didn't work out. So a few weeks ago, Tracy rejoined her coaches, Dick and Linda Mulvihill, just 24 hours before the qualifying meet for these national championships. Despite two months without serious training, she put on a dazzling performance and then went on to win the Mardi Gras meet in Baton Rouge one week later. In the tug of war of gymnastics versus a normal home and school life, gymnastics had won out. They also understand, you know, why I want to come back. It's not because I'm closer to the, you know dick and linda than i am to my family but it's just that it seemed to me that if i was going to do gymnastics i might as well do it right than just do it halfway and not do it as good as i could have but i mean if there was no gymnastics up here i wouldn't be living here <laughs> i mean i'd rather be home but that's my choice i had to make i know i've missed a lot but I think what I've gotten from gymnastics has been worth it. Gymnastics makes me, I guess you'd say disciplined, sort of just to get everything done. She's a very determined young lady. She's very determined. You tell her, oh, Tracy, why don't you quit while you're ahead? <laughs> no, I'm going to, I can still do it. Um, I had, I had a grand design for her. Get in while you're young, 
Do your gymnastics, play your games till you're 14 and get out while you're in good shape. Your arms still work, your legs work, your neck works. And so I had it all planned. And then I said, okay, now it's time to come home. She didn't want to come home. So you just, when they get 14, you can't make their plans for them. You know, that is a gripping story, and it proves that life can indeed be complicated for a 14-year-old girl. Tracy Talavera getting set now for a performance on the beam. She had a nine in the compulsories in this event. You know, Dick, I think that Tracy has a tremendous advantage here being able to start the optionals at the balance beam because no matter how trained you are as a gymnast, knowing you have to face the balance beam later in the competition makes you always concerned where you are in the all-around. If she gets a good routine done here, then she's going to have that confidence to carry with her through the rest of the main. Muriel, Julianne McNamara had an 8.85 in her second vault, so the 9.3 on that first vault that we saw holds up. That's right, Dick. And so far, Tracy's going really well. Solid and with very, very good pace, which I think is her trademark on the balance beam. And she hit her back walk over to her little kneeling position and goes into her flare, and things are working very well for Tracy. <laughs> Boy, she moved right into the back handsprings, three back handsprings, a very difficult section, which she'll get good credit from the judges for. No hesitations, no pauses. She's going really well. Getting set up to dismount, cartwheel, double twist, really nice job for Tracy. Fine performance for our leader and a 9-6, so she very likely will hold her lead. And a good audience at Stabler Arena at Lehigh University as we take a look at Amy Koopman. She's 14 years old, and she was seventh in the all-around in last year's national championship. She's on the uneven bar here. I think she was also a member of the United States Olympic team, a not very well-known top gymnast for our country. And I would say this is one of her weaker events, and she's off to a very good start. Here she's having trouble with the endo shoot, and her feet just hit. It'll be a deduction, but not that bad. Things are moving well again. Stalder shoot, pretty well done. Another stalder shoot, and going into her dismount, the common each dismount, except for foot forms and the hit on the bar and the rhythm break, really good. Keep in mind that Amy Koopman, as you see, the 9-4, was tied for third after the compulsories in this first of four rotations. 15-year-old Shari Mann, Ohio girl who won three gold medals on a trip to China. And she said that's been her greatest experience so far. And there she is on the beam. She, like Tracy, has this advantage of getting beam out of the way. She had a little trouble with her mount. She really didn't clearly come to the handstand. But other than that, things are off to a good start. Here she's going for one of her hardest Movements, two tuck backs in a series, and I think they were continuous enough for credit. Aerial front somersault, very positively well done. I think Sherry has grown artistically in the last year or two. She's becoming much more pleasant to see as an artist rather than just a, a trick doer, and that's been enjoyable to see. She just hit her back series very, very nice through the extension roll. Got a required full turn out of the way. Very hard jump with full turn. I think many people don't know how hard it really is to take those kind of chances. She's really doing a good job here. The leap was a little weak, but still no real obvious breaks. Getting ready for her dismount, round off, double twist, a little step in the landing, but a very nice dismount for Sherry. Sherry Mann in fifth place, coming into the final four rotation. Nine, four, five, and that is her total score, and we'll give you all of it once we have the completion of this rotation. I think any time you get a 9-4-5 on beam, you have to be pretty happy about it and assume it's going to hold you in the all-around. They can just squeeze her. Here's our elder statesman, and she'd kill me if she heard me say that, Kathy Johnson from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And she's not at all dismayed at her spot in the standings. Well, historically, I've always liked to be second or third after compulsories, because I've always been the kind that like to climb and really fight for something. And I think I'll do a better job, because I can do my optionals under pressure a lot easier. She's on the vault. 
And she says her ambition is to stay in through the world championships of this year. I would say that most people would call this Kathy's weakest event. Lay out Sukuhara, and it wasn't weak, it was strong, did really good jump. We're going to keep an eye on this lady throughout the competition. I know that you have high hopes with her. Take a closer look at it. She gets in really very well. Here we can see her rising. We saw the little form error, the legs apart, a little too long in the pike position, but awfully good. 9-3-5 for Kathy Johnson. So after our first rotation, Tracy Talavera still in the lead. And as Gina Stallone, by the way, dropped to 13th after a problem on the beam, Julian McNamara, defending champion, has moved up into eighth place. As the gymnast gets set for the second rotation, Tracy Talavera is our leader right at this point. But one gymnast who would be right up there in the competition is not here. Talking about Marsha Frederick of North Haven, Connecticut. The gymnast, a free-flowing body of beauty and strength, gracefully defying the laws of gravity in an all-out effort to please a panel of judges. As she flirts with disaster, it is easy to believe she is indestructible. But one era, in or out of the gym, can bring a career to a screeching halt. Five weeks ago, an auto accident sidelined the career of Marsha Frederick. The car she was driving was hit broadside and spun into a tree, knocking her unconscious. I thought I was in a dream. I thought for sure I was in a dream. I, me I remember seeing my mother there. She was just covered with blood. And she wasn't even aware of that. The primary problem at that time was how severe is the concussion. Sometimes it uh, takes uh, actually months to return to a full normal intellectual capacity. Fortunately, Marsha's concussion was mild. Within a week, she returned to the gym. Concentrating on compulsory moves, she progressed slowly, gradually regaining her balance, timing, and confidence. The workouts didn't always go smoothly enough. At times, they were downright frustrating. I'm not able to do what I want to do in gymnastics right away. I've been having trouble with my balance, and I've been getting headaches. And I haven't been able to train the way I want to, but I'm not doing too bad. She knows what she has to do. She knows what the competition is doing. At least I tell her that. And um, there's still, it's a very goal-oriented kind of situation, and we set out to achieve a certain goal and shoot for it. Marsha's goals have been shot down before. Twice she has had to compete in the Nationals with injuries. Last summer, she missed the Olympics, honoring President Carter's boycott. But each time, she's bounced back. Marsha is a comeback kid. Marsha's always been a fighter. Oh, I'll come back harder. I'll come back five times as harder. I want to be world champion again. I want to be the best in the world on bars again. Because that's what I lost. That, that's the title that I lost, and I want to gain it back. I just get this feeling inside of me where I get, I get very anxious to do well, and I, I get very determined. And if I miss this meet, then I've got that next meet coming up, and I'll be darned if I don't win that meet, because I'll try my hardest. Kathy Johnson trying to move up right now. She's less than a point behind Tracy Talavera. She competes now on the uneven bars. Actually, eight-tenths of a point is a lot to catch up, Dick. But Kathy has made so many improvements in this event in the last two years that actually she may catch up a little bit here. Gorgeous toe and toe off. The best one I've seen her doing a meet. And the giant swings are really nice. To the delta and the drop, she's really going well. She's by the hard part of her routine, except for her dismount, which she'll be trying, I believe, for the first time. She's getting set here for the double twist, and she made it. Good. Really good job. 9-6, you know, Kathy Johnson, one great thing about her, she does not hide her emotions at all. She feels elated, elated she is. Feel good first. Great. <laughs> That's the best on to I've ever saw you do. And how'd the double twist feel? Absolutely marvelous. I can't say. You really psyched for the rest now? Very. Congratulations, son. It's just super. Thank you. Kathy Johnson glowing right now as we move over to the floor exercise. Shari Mann tied for second with Amy Koopman, seven and a half tenths behind the leader, Tracy Talavera, here in the floor exercise. <laughs> I think we're going to be seeing most of the girls working to instrumental this year. The United States has been a little behind in this development, but most of the top competitors now are utilizing instrumental music. Sherry's working her way into the corner to set up her first tumbling pass. 
It's usually the hardest thing you'll see a competitor do in her floor exercise routine. Here she's doing an Arabian through to a double twist. The double twist was a little low and the direction wasn't straight. I'm also a little bit surprised, no double somersault. I think most of our good competitors today will be doing double somersaults. Maybe she's saving it for later. Getting set for her second tumbling effort. Round off back handspring and another double twist. Nicer than the one in the first pass. Well done. is an event that I think there's a fair amount of controversy about right now. The new rules have indicated that difficulty has become more and more important, but I think grace, elegance, and form still remain the most important. There was a full twist through to a tuck back somersault. Poor form again, but she made it. Do you think she's showing this? I think that she is not doing what floor exercise is supposed to be about, which is personal expression and beauty of movement. 15-year-old Shari Mann. Here we can take another look at our first tumbling pass. It's round off Arabian somersault, stepping out continuously into the back handspring. And here's the weakest part of it. The double twist is low and with poor form with a low landing. So I'm sure that would have cost her a tenth or two. 9-2 for Shari Mann on the floor exercise. As we pointed out at the top, the audience here really sometimes doesn't know what to look at because it is a four-ring circus with four events going on at once. And while Shari Mann was competing in the floor exercise, Amy Koopman was performing on the beam, and this was going on while Sherry was on the mat. Amy had some little balance problems, and that's not good for her in the all-around because balance beam was one of her two best events, I would say, beam and floor. So she has to do well here in order to move up in the all-around. No question about it. 9-1 was her score for Amy Koopman, tied with Sherry Mann for second place. Now Julianne McNamara, 15 years old from Flushing, New York, a defending champion who recently was the all-round winner in the Elite Championships in Oakland. She is really great on this event. If she hits Dick, there's no one, in my opinion, in her class in the competition. Off to a very good start. High start, immediate giant, and it's really looking beautiful. She usually swings very good bars, but if I had a criticism, is that she's a little tight. Here, she's just swinging all the way out. It's going really great. This is her most difficult sequence. The front endo shoot, she just hit it cold. Staller shoot cold. Giant swing. She'll be coming into her dismount. Under swing, front somersault with a half twist in the pike position. What a great routine. Julianne McNamara was in 12th. She moved up to 8th. Here's a coach, Dick Mulvihill. About time. <laughs> About time. Fantastic. And speaking as a coach, I know why Dick is so thrilled. These kinds of moments make your whole gymnastics coaching life, and you wait for a long time for them. Look at that beautiful endo shoot, the gorgeous stalder. It's just beautiful, Dick. 9-8 for Julianne McNamara on the uneven bars, and that is the highest score so far. She's really going to challenge the leaders. And right now, a very happy Julianne is with Muriel. First, how does it feel? It's, was it the best you've ever done? It felt good. I felt really relaxed and swingy. <laughs> it's the most swing I've seen you. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> Do you know what place you were in coming into it? No. You were eighth. Do you think it's going to help? I hope. <laughs> you psyched for the rest? Yeah. You just keep it up. I was super job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if Julianne was the winner in the all-round in the Elite Nationals recently, in second place was Tracy Talavera, who's in first place right now. How's the floor exercise among her routines? Well, I think it's what's causing her the most problems right now, so this is going to be really important for her. The movement she hurt her ankle on at the beginning of the season was a double back somersault, so today she's going to try something different, a triple twist. It's coming up right now. Whoa, she must have gotten lost. That wasn't a triple, and I think she just broke out and sat down. I think she must have been lost. Her coach, Dick Mulvihill. Tracy's second tumbling effort, running front somersault, through to double twist. She did a good job on that one, Dick. A little louder. He wants that music turned up. I hope it's because the next music is my old floor music, and I just love it. What dancing music. <laughs>
she's really showing, I think, great composure and a lot of fight here because she knows she's in a lot of trouble after the sit in the beginning. Everything else, very well done. And here she's making a mood change back to the disco type music showing some expression. Now, one more time to tumble for Tracy. Back handspring, through to double twist again, and another pretty good job. I think it's going to be okay. It's not going to be very high, but the rest of the routine should help at least keep it up near a nine somewhere. That was a good shot. <laughs> it's all right. Here we can take a closer look at that missed triple twist. It's a common error to get confused when you first start doing triple twists and still are doing doubles. I think virtually she just gets lost here, Dick, and we can see her go one twist, two twists. I think she thinks she's there and she breaks everything out, doesn't know the ground's there, and sits down. Sure she's glad she's got this out of the way. 8-7 for Tracy Talavera, who has won just about every honor but the Nationals, and she has dropped to second place. Kathy Johnson with that 9-6 on the bars has taken the lead, and look at Julianne McNamara. Her 9-8 on the bars moves her up to third place. And we'll be back with the final two rotations a little later on. We are back at Stabler Arena at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for the 1981 U.S. Women's Gymnastics Championships. And after two of our four rotations, we have a dramatic and interesting story to tell because the race is tightened up. Kathy Johnson, the 20-year-old from Atlanta, Georgia, has taken over the lead by one-tenth of a point over Tracy Talavera, and our defending champion, Julian McNamara, is in third place. And keep in mind that it was Kathy Johnson touted to us by Muriel Grossfeld. Now, a tremendous performance on the uneven bars by Kathy, a 9-6, and Tracy had a problem on the floor exercise. Tracy thought she did a triple twist, and so did her coaches. That's what she planned on doing, but as it turned out, she did a double twist and got lost, so the, the very low score in the problem, besides the fall. And as we get to the final two, what are the important things to look for? Well, first, Kathy Johnson has to face balance beam, and balance beam and floor exercise are her two best events, but you know balance beam in a competition is is shakier than just saying beam is a good event for me so she has to face that event and tracy has it under her belt already of course julianne has to look at the balance beam yet also and anything can happen there so i think it's going to be a tight race i also think it's interesting that they all have what they would consider one of their best events left so i think it's going to be a tight battle to the end 15 year old cherry man also has the beam behind her the beam and the floor exercise as she's now ready for the third rotation and Dick, she has a little of advantage here. She can execute a little more poorly than some of the people we've seen in the past because her vault is worth the full 10 points. Full twist on, full twist off. And she did a very credible job. It'll be a decent score. Sherry Man definitely in the fight. A 9-3-5 in the ball. Here's Michelle Goodwin from Reading, Pennsylvania. She's 15 years old third in the junior nationals in 1980 and dick she's off to a very hard start first a head spring onto the beam a jump with a half turn followed by the backhand spring to the back somersault and you know she's in a unique position in this meet i was there once most gymnasts have been there one time it's called it's your first time that you're really in the thick of things and you're tense but really not as tense as the people who are really trying to defend their position so she's got an advantage here right now that she'll never have again she has nothing to lose everything to gain and so far, she's doing really well. Michelle, not that far behind. And of course, you hear the music in the background. Keep in mind that there are three other routines in progress. As you see Goodwin on the beam, and you hear the applause for another gymnast after she's completed her apparatus. And the music, of course, was for the floor exercise. And the gymnast on the beam has to face the sudden silence when the free ex music stops. And I'll tell you, you feel it in the pit of your stomach and as your ankles shake. She's just doing a wonderful job, though. Really nice difficulties, very nice presentation, super concentration, and she's taking chances in a lot of categories. <laughs> Getting set here for a dismount, I think. Yes, round off the double twist. And boy, what a job for your first time out in championships of the USA. She could move up with that 9-3-5 on the tough balance beam. Just staying on is difficult enough. And some of our leaders still have to face that. Tracy Talavera, of course, lost her lead to Kathy Johnson, getting set for her second vault. The best of two vaults count. Here's what happened in her first. 
But she had rather a disaster. She could lock rotation off the board, so she lost timing, kicked out early, and sat down. 8-6 for Tracy. Be a little tighter off the board, but everything else was fine. You just kicked out too soon. Same ball. You got it. Wow, Dick Mullahill is a smart coach. Most coaches would overcoach when they get a chance to talk to their athlete. I think she's going to make it because he gave her confidence. Here she comes. Handspring, way better handspring. Super front. That's one of the best ones I've seen Tracy do. What a competitor. She has never won this event, the U.S. Women's Championships. And you can see her really suck it up in the second vault. She's trailing, and she wants that lead back. A 9-3-5 for Tracy Talavera. Floor exercise was a tough one. Turned out you really weren't sure what you did. How did this one feel? Well, uh, my first one I had a little trouble. I just kicked out to soon, but my second one felt okay. <laughs> Do you feel confident now knowing that your last event is Mars? Well, yeah. <laughs> Still have to worry, though. <laughs> Wouldn't you say, though, that's the best spot you could be in? Maybe Mars for your last set? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> best of luck, hon. Go to Thank it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not only does Tracy have to look ahead at Kathy Johnson, our leader, but behind at our defending champion and a teammate of Tracy's in Oregon, Julianne McNamara. Said she was born in Flushing, but her parents live in Danville, California. But what a story here for a defending champion. She started in 12th place, moved to 8th, and is in 3rd as she gets set for the difficult beam with two rotations to go. And maybe even more difficult for Julianne, because if she has a bad event, we're looking at it right now. Off to a good start in that she stayed on the beam, but the one-arm handstand was really not held long enough. Besides, it's not being a real good event for her. It's also the event that she met disaster on in the compulsories that caused her to come in in the 12th place into this optional rotation. How does she get her mind, you know, to forget about that? Hopefully, Julianne, at this point in time, has enough experience. I think we'll be able to tell that as the routine goes through. Nice job on the back handsprings. She looks a little more confident, and her pace as the routine is going on is improving. However, balance beam is so slow, Dick, that you have so much time to think. And when you know it's that close, the internal shakes are really hard to control. Good job here on the planche. A little bent elbows, but she's steady. She's moving, I think, a little more slowly than, say, Tracy did. You can see that she's being careful. Aha. Uh -huh. Important trick, because I think that's about the last hard thing she has planned for today. She'll be getting set for her dismount. Cartwheel. Full twisting back somersault. Not a great routine, but I would say probably adequate to the situation. Keep in mind that Julianne McNamara was .25 behind the leader, Kathy Johnson. This trick, the pike back, is crucial, Dick, because it's the last hard trick that Julianne executed. A sign of her experience is that she stays very careful and very sure that she makes it to the ground safely. Inexperienced gymnasts usually make big mistakes at this point in time. But right now, our leader, Kathy Johnson, deep in concentration. That's what she needs to keep her lead as she gets set for the very difficult balance beam. And that's all that is on her mind. And right now, Muriel is talking to Julianne off to the side. Boy, it's been a hard day, a real comeback. Are you glad this one's out of the way? Yeah, I played a little safe because of the problems I had yesterday, but I'm just happy it's over. <laughs> Did you think any of those thoughts, like this is what I messed up yesterday when you're in the middle of it? No, I just tried to concentrate on what I was doing. Good luck, Julianne. The irony of this situation, here's Kathy Johnson, who told Muriel she prefers to be trailing. She is now getting ready for her first apparatus as our leader. That's what she needs to keep the lead. Keep in mind, she was shaking in the compulsories in the balance beam. A lot of pressure on her shoulders. Kathy really loves the balance beam, and she approaches it in a beautiful way. And let's see what happens here. Back walk over, layout back, somersault, really good job. A little bobble, I think, is more tension related and not really a mistake. Dick, look at the head. Look at the dance movements. She's taking chances she really doesn't need to take. She's looking away from the beam and doing everything in the hardest way it could be done. Round off, tuck back, somersault, another really hard trick under her belt. It's really going great. 
It's very hard to take your eyes away from the balance beam. And so far, she's doing that over and over again. A very unusual way to protect your lead. In fact, it's not protective at all. It's actually a way to win the balance beam event. Nice job in the extension roll. Another nice extension. And another bend back that really the judges give her very little credit for, but aesthetically, it's really preferred. Nice high side leap. And continues with another leap. And that combination just always awes me. She does a backhand spring. If she makes a mistake, there's no beam for her foot. She still took the chance. Her dismount, round off, double twist, super job, Kathy Johnson. Kathy Johnson didn't compete in this event last year. She was in Hungary with the United States team. She's had several injuries over the years, including the latest uh, stress fracture of the big toe. She wants this championship so badly. This is her first real shot, perhaps, since 1978 at winning it all, a 9-4 in the beam. A very big performance. Muriel is now with our leader. Kathy, most people would be conservative to hold a lead after they finally got it. My compliments, hard tumbling, hard dance, harder than it needs to be, and commitment and with, with focus, super. How do you feel? Great. I just, I had a few little balance things, but I've learned to really fight it off, and I feel great. I think this is your finest hour so far. How do you feel? The same. I just feel great. Are you psyched for floor? Sure I am. You gonna do anything different or special? No, same thing. Hopefully better. All right, Muriel, now we get to the interesting part because on a superb, and I have to say, clutch performance on the beam by Kathy Johnson now has a tenth and a half lead over Tracy Talavera, still second. Juliet McNamara still third. But now we go to the rotation, the final rotation when... You know, McNamara and Johnson are going to be on the floor exercise, and Tracy's going to be bars. in the uneven bars. Okay. Right, that's right. And they, all in interesting stories to tell. First, I think that without question, Tracy should be glad she's at bars. It's the event that she's done well at in the past, and, and that's where I'd like to be if I were Tracy. Julianne and her coach, Dick Mollyhill, I would just watch them discussing some tactics in the back, and what they've decided to do is Julianne was going to come in and do a double twist at the end of her routine. Because she's three-tenths behind now, they've decided to go for a double back, which she hasn't competed this year, but in the past, if she does that extra double back at the end, she gets one more tenth, gives her a chance at the championship. And then there's Kathy. Kathy's best event is floor exercise. She won a bronze medal in the world championships in this event. I'm sure this is where she'd love to be. On the other hand, Kathy said herself, when I'm ahead, it's tough, and when I'm behind, it's easier. So in a way, it makes me wonder if she'll be as steady as she can be. However, I think she'll do a great job. But as we look at the rotation, the way it pans out now, and you never could tell what happens, Kathy Johnson will indeed be the last one to go on her best exercise. Yes, she will, unless the judges slow down or speed up somewhere, and I think it'll make... I think it would make Kathy more comfortable to see everybody else finish and then to go. So you, you never know how to meet runs, though, you know. It looks like her advantage right now. definitely does. So the stage is set for what could be a rousing finish. Julianne McNamara in third place right now. She is our defending champion, and this is her last shot at keeping the crown in the floor exercise. Julianne has a new composition this year. I think it really fits her new skill and her new experience. I'm looking forward to it. Off to a good start, getting ready for her first tumbling effort. Double back somersault in the pike position. Maybe a little deduction for running out, Dick, but really small. Good job. Her composition really is very nice. Here she's building tension so that you are ready for a second tumbling pass, running front, through to double twisting back somersault. She started in 12th place, Muriel, moved up to 8th, 3rd, and has a shot. She sure does, and her floor, may, while it may not be as passionate as some well-known gymnasts like Nellie Kim or Kathy Johnson, it's still in all is passionate in its composition and in its form. Well, we're getting close, Dick. We're getting close to that last tumbling pass, which has been changed. She's been turning a double twist. Now she's going to try a double back. Oh, boy. And I'll tell you, she had enough height to do it. What a shame. Julianne McNamara, Danville, California.
California. Born in Flushing, New York, 15 years old. Not too pleased right now. Look at the score, 8-9-5. Well, you can forget about winning. She's going to have some trouble holding on to third place. We can take another look at what happened to Julianne. I think we're going to see when we take the closer look that everything was going fine. The round-off back handspring are really pretty good for the end of a routine, but she doesn't pull her legs around. That's unfortunate. No question. Just a tough break for her. Kathy Johnson getting ready. She's our leader for the floor exercise. That's her best event. And Dick Mulvahill getting Tracy Talavera loose. That's what she trails. Tinty? Okay. Just relax, honey. Sure. Well, waiting takes experience, and Tracy has experience, so she may do pretty well with the weight. We focus in on Sherry Mann in fourth place. She can overtake McNamara. She sure can, and this is the event that Sherry first made her name on. This is the first thing the judges were aware of in terms of her work. She's very good on bars with a very original routine and lots of difficulties. And at the end of that routine, she's trying a dismount that has never been competed for, a free hip circle to a flyaway. We'll see how it goes. So far, she has one little error. Everything else is very good. Getting ready for the dismount. Free circle. Oh, my God. She all right? Yeah. Whoa. We have had two unfortunate spills. McNamara on the floor X. Sherry Mann. On the uneven bars, it's going to cost them both. She's going back. I, I, I don't understand what's happening. It's a rule of thumb that you don't go up and ever repeat anything. There's no way she should be repeating something. She's already done her dismount. This is just most strange and not a good way to score high. Well, now, Mural, as a result, the judges will have a conference, and that'll surely slow up the bars routine. That means Tracy Talavera will have to wait before performing on the bars, and that changes our anticipated order in the final rotation. And now, Kathy Johnson, instead of going last in the floor exercise, is getting set to go right now. She is our leader, and I guess you could say, Muriel, it's hers to win right now. It sure is. All Kathy needs is a normal exercise. This event is her forte. One and a half twist, double twist off to a fine start, a difficult and well-executed start. And here we see the passion and the beauty and the personalness of floor exercise for women. Her second tumbling pass, round up, back handspring, double pike. Oh. Actually, I feel like crying. It's a disastrous error. It's five-tenths of a point deduction. Tracy watching. Kathy Johnson in her best exercise, as you pointed out, just routine, and she can win the championship. And then that. It's just, it just kills me. Just this beautiful soda bosk now. Just such beautiful control. This is what floor exercise is about. But you cannot take away the fact that she fell. The five tenths will have to be taken. So McNamara had a problem. Became a two-girl competition with Johnson and Tracy Talavera. And now Kathy Johnson, unfortunate situation. Same skill, too. Double pike back. She just made a nice double twist. Good job on her last pass. And here she'll be finishing what has become a very, very famous end for Kathy Johnson. What a disappointment. It was a beautiful exercise with the exception of the fall. She was the U.S. Women's Champion in 1978. We mentioned the oldest competitor. Wants to make sure her nose is all right. She fell hard, no question about it. And, of course, her 8.95 is her score. And that's going to really affect her. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that her feelings are as bruised as her nose right now. She missed the same skill as Julianne McNamara. Double back in the pike position. And she's under-rotated and just can't pull it around. So this is a dramatic change of events because Tracy now may have a shot. What about Kathy here? And look how disappointed she is. I guess it's a dumb question to ask. Do you know what happened? Uh, I just kind of ran out of gas. I think I put a whole lot into warm-ups. I didn't quite save enough for the meet. 
It, when I saw your first tumbling pass, it looked more sluggish than I've seen you before. It made me a little worried. Could you sort of tell it didn't feel right? Yeah, I did. I felt a little slow just throughout the whole thing. I didn't quite have the zip that I usually do. Well, I guess now we just have to wait and see what Tracy does. Yeah. It was beautiful, despite the air, by the way. The dance was gorgeous. Thank you. It was, Muriel, and a very good point and a tough time to talk to someone. Tracy Talavera with Linda Mulvihill. What does she need to win? She knows that she needs a 9.15 to win the championship. She has never won the national title before. And she's getting set for the uneven bars, trying to capitalize on errors by others. And there is a distraught Kathy Johnson who's not going to wait around. She is walking out of the arena. She does not want to see Tracy Talavera as she prepares for her final apparatus. And probably right now, Tracy is doing her routine over and over again in her own mind to get ready for this really important bar routine. And here's Michelle Goodwin starting on the floor. You see fifth place, and that's what she needs for third. And we understand that Sherry Mann had an 8.75 after she fell off the uneven bars. And with the problems that McNamara had on the floor exercise, Michelle Goodwin, 15 years old from Reading, could move up to third place. And she got off to a terrific start. A really good double back somersault with a lunge with styling coming out, showing confidence and that she's not having problems with her double back tonight at all. Very nice leap series. Getting ready for her second tumbling effort. Round off, full and a half twist. Through to full twist with a step out, very original, nice pass stick. Being young or perhaps a first-timer, she's putting a little more energy into her connections than some of the other competitors. Tracy's ready to go, and when she gets the flag, she's going to go on the uneven bars for what is really the crucial apparatus in this competition. Now she's ready to go. It's hers to win right now, Muriel. And it's off to a good start. She's starting with the Talavera, and she just nailed it. Tracy's been in a lot of tense situations before. I think she's going to know how to deal with it. Stalder shoot. Front endo shoot. She hit her feet a little bit on the bar, but no rhythm interruption. It's still good. Another Stalder. Pulls it back. The dismount. Full twist and common each dismount. She's got it. Goodwin completed her floor exercise, and Tracy Talavera going for the championship has completed the uneven bars in the final event as she waits the scores will she win her first championship dick mulvahill her coach is getting close to her to see what what the numbers say nice jay's got it a nine seven more than what she needed on the bars and tracy talavera is our national champion 1981 on this final performance here we can look at her front endo shoot. There we see that little tap of the feet on the bar, but it really didn't interrupt the rhythm, so it was a small deduction. The only real, real one in the exercise, Dick. Continues on with her stalder. Sets up for the full twist and common each. And that did it for her. Tracy, the 9.7 really means one thing. It means I can shake your hand and say congratulations. You're the 1981 National All-Around Champion. Thank How does that title feel? <laughs> oh, it feels good. I don't think I've ever been so glad to be done. <laughs> Is it something you wanted to be the national champion? Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know. It's really an honor, and I'm glad to be done. <laughs> Well, it was an honor for all of us to watch you. You did awfully steady gymnastics. It's been a tough year. Did you ever think that a year that started out with a broken leg literally could finish this wonderfully? No. <laughs> did it teach you something? Maybe adversity produces maybe greatness? Yeah, I had to really work through all that yuck to get there, so I'm really happy. <laughs> Congratulations, son. It was really wonderful watching you. I'm glad you came through. Thank you. Well, she can add the U.S. Women's Gymnastics Championships to her long list of honors for the 14-year-old Tracy Talavera. Kathy Johnson finished second. Michelle Goodwin with a 9-4 on the floor exercise moved up to third place. And we'll be back. As they are announcing our champion behind us, Tracy Talavera. Muriel, I want to put to bed the cliche that 
Nobody wanted to win. We saw mistakes by all of the contenders before Tracy's tremendous performance on the uneven bars, but that's not the case. In fact, Kathy Johnson walked out of the arena, didn't even want to see Tracy on the bars after her floor exercise. That's right, and you're right. As an athlete and as a coach, I've always resented people who thought it really worked that way. But one thing I will say about what we saw tonight, maybe it's one of the other reasons that, that gymnastics or sport is a good activity for young ladies, because they all tried tonight. One person made it. A few, the try didn't work. But maybe that's what they'll take later on in life with them, that you can try and you may fail, but eventually you can triumph if you work at it hard enough. And boy, they were sure working and trying hard tonight. And we really had a down-to-the-wire fight. In fact, down-to-the-wire is, is an understatement. It was down to the very last apparatus. I felt like we were at the Olympic Games with these five hundredths of a point shifts. It was just incredible and really exciting to watch and, and oh, just so dramatic. I really enjoyed it. Thank you again, Muriel Grossfeld. Thank you, Dick. It's been wonderful working with you. A rainbow was the symbol of this competition and how appropriate it is for Tracy Talavera, who found the gold at the end of the rainbow. A human yo-yo going from her coaches, the Mulva Hills in Oregon, to her family in California, finally back with her coaches. Terrific pressure on anyone, particularly for a 14-year-old. This victory is especially rewarding. Oh.